Hello, everyone. This is your occasional reminder that it is fully legal to record on-duty police officers, officers performing their duties in public in the state of Illinois. And no, you do not need their permission. This is called cop watching and once again is fully legal in the state of Illinois. The often cited Illinois eavesdropping statute, statute was struck down in 2012 by the ACLU. If a cop tells you to stop filming in Illinois and you are not in a place with a reasonable expectation of privacy, go ahead and tell him to fuck himself okay okay i'm spike that's beautiful i'm cal i i i'll i agree with the sentiment but i will never never tell a cop to fuck himself i would not to his face i would i'm a coward what's he gonna do fucking punch me do it do I don't, it i could use a million dollars fucking do it i don't have time for that fuck cops i don't have time to be punched <laughs> i have things to do spike mm. Film all cops at all times, everyone. I agree with that part, yes. I swear to you. Uh, yeah, um, basically, this is coming out of a thing where fairly recently I discovered that there are channels on YouTube which fully dedicate themselves to doing pretty much nothing but filling out all the paperwork that is required for the release of cop body cam footage. And since it is public property, like you own the cop body cam footage of like pretty much any crime you can think of that's not currently under investigation at this moment and it's not like an active open case awaiting prosecution so you can just fill out the paperwork to get it if you want and that's what these people do and then they just put them on youtube and they monetize them <laughs> and uh yeah there have been multiple scenes i have witnessed where oh my god if there was not a body cam present someone would have absolutely gotten punched absolutely so I am all for filming cops at all fucking times. Um, that doesn't always stop them from punching people. No, it um, doesn't, but it definitely does sometimes. It does sometimes. Nothing um, works 100% of the times, but, but at least me, at I least say, when they I do punch it. people, there's proof. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I forget who was talking about it, um, but it was like... Um, there was some YouTuber that was talking about cops, like, are intentionally getting better at, like, positioning themselves in a way so you don't, so they're obscuring the abuse that they're doing from the body cam. I'm sure um, that's believable, yeah. but at the same time, like, just because something doesn't work 100% of the time doesn't yeah, mean no, you shouldn't Yeah, no, I agree with you. I'm, I'm just saying... You might just, still get punched. Yeah, and I'm saying that um, I saw a thing where there was some domestic shit going on and a woman ran off down the highway and she was clearly in the middle of a mental health crisis. Like, I'm not a psychiatrist, so I'm not going to try and diagnose her. But, like, when you know, you know. And the cops chased her into the woods, and there were three of them at this point. And I swear to you, while they were basically sitting on top of her and holding her down, she was making, like... I don't even know how to describe it, like angry bear noises for like 10 minutes straight. And they clearly knew her. This woman was like a known quantity. So they kept saying her name. So they're like, I don't know what her name was. Stop it, Angela. Angela, stop. Angela, stop. Angela, stop. Over and over. This is such While a fun subject. Writhing around on the ground going. Ah, ah. Like It wasn't like human grunting in effort. It was like bear noises. And then they tried to pick her up and fully intentionally, fully with purpose and intent, she just revved up and just walloped a cop in the crotch with her foot. And the cop did the automatic thing and he like bent over and stumbled away and took a minute and you could see on his face if there was no camera there, Angela would have caught the beating of a lifetime. You could see it. So I'm all for cameras. Yeah, no, I also support cameras. I'm just. Yeah. And no, I don't think that they're infallible. Trust me. I don't. Yeah. But yeah. Anyway, um, how y'all been? Tired. All right. Um, I got musical opinions. Um, I bet you do. I do. I always do. Um, uh huh. Uh, the, uh, on Blue Sky. Uh, my good friend Jay Edden mm -hmm. um, was tweeting about 
the musical Rent. Um, and here's the thing about Rent. While I am not ride or die about Rent, uh, mm-hmm. a pet peeve of mine is a lot of people that hate it s- sum it up incorrectly. Okay. And it's like, there are definite problems with the musical Rent, but they are not the things that you are saying. <laughs> there are other things. You are you are factually incorrect about what is going on in the musical. You're um, okay with Rent being hated, but it has to be for the right reasons. It has to be I accurate. Mean, yeah. Hate. yeah. Um if cause if um if it's inaccurate hate, it's like no, that's you're just wrong. You are factually incorrect about what is going on. So a lot okay. of people are like Oh, Rent is just about a bunch of assholes that are complaining about the fact that they have to pay rent in general and then whining about having AIDS. And it's like, <laughs> that is incorrect. <laughs> that is That's not what Rent is about. Um, okay. Um, the villain of Rent doesn't want the protagonist to pay their rent like a normal person. He wants to charge them a year's worth of back rent from New York. I don't know a single person who has a year's worth of New York back rent Uh just that you can get in a week. Just chilling. Yeah. Yeah. Like he's like, you have a week or I'm kicking you out unless you give me a year's worth of New York rent. Is this part of some, like, scheme to get everyone out of the building so he can sell it or upgrade it or something? No, what it is, is when they're like, this is an impossible task you have given us. He's like, well, I won't do that if you help me destroy this tent city that is near my property and is driving down my property values. So he is blackmailing Uh... his former friends into helping him make homeless people's lives actively harder. So you said so, homeless people, uh, wait, at former friends. You said so. Yeah, the they used to be friends building? with this guy, which oh. is why they were told they could live there for free. That oh. was an arrangement they came up with when they were friends. Oh. Um, but they had a falling out in the past year because the guy turned into a shitty, selfish landlord. Um, oh, okay. And is a, okay. He is a cartoon supervillain because he is like pay me this exorbitant amount of money or you have to help me destroy the lives of homeless people. Um, How did he come into ownership of an entire building? um, He married a rich lady. Um, That'll do it. God, uh, I wish that was me. (laughs) So, so the, so like while the main characters of Rent are self-absorbed art theater kids. Sure. could get on people's nerves. Like if someone says, oh, I hate the main characters. I'm like, that's fine. They, they are obnoxious people, mm-hmm. but they are not actively trying to destroy a bunch of homeless people's lives. That is um, also true. Um, so this is like obnoxious art school kid versus cartoon supervillain. Yeah. Um, and a lot of the people who are like, oh, these main characters, they're just upset that they have to pay rent as a concept. It's like, no, they're, they're yes, they have stupid, like, oh, don't be a sellout, man, like, nonsense yeah. that is common in the 90s. For um, sure. But um, that is like, a drop in the bucket compared to what the villain of the musical is trying to do. Yeah, I have um, to say, he he gives me these vibes, and uh, folks who are my age might understand this. He gives me Captain Planet bad guy vibes. And what I yeah. mean by that is if you watched Captain Planet as a child, you probably remember that the enemies, the bad guys who Captain Planet fought, they polluted kind of just to do it. They didn't actually, like, pollution wasn't a side effect of a thing they were doing. They weren't, like, oil companies who were obsessed with profit and intentionally, you know, bogging down the development of clean energy because they wanted to keep their profit margins or something like that. No, they were, like, a man who kind of looks like a pig except, like, squash yellow who would show up 
with a tanker truck just labeled like slime and he would like blow it all over a playground and he'd be like ha 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 pollution so and it, it's very neatly sidestepped but where does it come from for like cartoon people who are like oh i love to pollute and so he at least the reason why he wants to destroy the lives of homeless people is to maximize his profits so the villain is still capitalism yeah like, the villain is always capitalism. it's worth at least a logic to why he wants to destroy these homeless people's lives it is just I, I, it gets a, it really like grinds my gears when people are like, oh, they're just complaining about the fact that they have to pay rent in general. And yeah. <laughs> obviously, y'all can continue this conversation, but for the benefit of everyone else, it's worth knowing I've never seen this. I've, I'm just smiling and nodding. That's okay. The most I have seen of rent is I saw a essay. I, I might, it might have been Lindsay Ellis who did it. Who it did was it. probably Lindsay Ellis, and she is one mm. of the people who makes these bad complaints. She's wrong. <laughs> she is factually wrong about the plot of rent. Um, I and she the, is right though about how it's kind of weird because there, a thing that happens a lot when musicals make the jump to film, which which Lindsay was specifically talking about, like the film yeah. edition of Rent. The original cast kind of really wants to play those parts, whether it makes sense anymore or not. And we most recently saw this in Dear Evan Hansen, where we were subjected yeah. to like a 30 something year old man pretending to be 16. And like the makeup department, they tried their hardest. They tried their little hearts out. I disagree. It, I don't think they did. <laughs> it didn't work. Yeah. There, there were ways that. to make him look 16 and they did not do them. Yeah. Um, it, it, it was just, the whole vibe was like exceptionally creepy because it was this like slouchy, puppy-eyed, clearly 30-something man going to yeah. school. Like, next frankly, to older. Definite, literal children and no one said he, anything. He he is definitely older. Um, yeah. Well, here's the thing. Rent if he were, had... like, here, the, the, it was one of those things where, sorry, this is the only thing I actually know anything about because yeah. I have oh, seen clips it. of him. Um, it's one of those things where, like, the makeup frankly made him look even older than he actually is. That is true. Like, that is true. There is just some. There is a texture to a fully foundationed face mm -hmm. that just screams older. Yeah, it's not. Working. I don't know if it's, it's the dryness, the texture, the lack of pigmentation. Like, there's no rosiness, no mm -hmm. uh, specks, nothing. It was just the complete. It was like. I came off the assembly line, but this assembly line makes old people. <laughs> so it's a brand new old person. <laughs> Fresh out of the box. Yeah. But yeah, uh, the, the rent, the movie edition of rent, like the movie edition of dear Evan Hansen, they have similar problems because uh, if it is not exclusively original cast, it is mostly original Broadway cast, but the movie was made like 15 years after rent was like a Broadway phenomenon. So yeah. everyone's like so, 35. It does make them seem more obnoxious because they should have grown out of this exactly. by now. Exactly, yeah. But they're at least not creeping on teenagers like in Dear Evan Hansen. Yeah, um, yeah. That did not help. That did not help. Like, <laughs> while they should have grown out of it, I do know 30-year-olds that are that obnoxious. Oh, for um, sure, for sure. And so it, it's like... it. it it works slightly better in the movie rent. The mm -hmm. uh, the problem with the movie rent is also the director was not comfortable with queer characters embracing one another. Mm -hmm. um, and so he does not like play into the main sympathetic romance of the story, mm -hmm. um, which is two black men. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, so it's like he literally should have gotten any other director. Like you couldn't <laughs> find a Hollywood director that was okay with queer stuff. Like right. Um, so, but I gotta say, uh, yeah, bitching about <laughs> bitching about that kind of thing when you are like clearly almost forty, <laughs> it lacks charm. It like yeah. bitching about that kind of like the bitch about rent specifically when you were like you know well again again yeah. what's wrong with bitching about hey what's wrong with bitching said, about rent 
Yeah, well, no, Spike, again, yeah. I would complain if someone said to me, you need to yeah. give me a year's worth of New York rent in a week or you need, or you're, we, I will kick you out of where you live. Yeah, but I'm like, still coming from it from like the, the context where it was originally presented to me, where, you know, before yeah. you, you clarified a few things where you, you kind of think the same way, like there are certain things that are kind of like cute and understandable when you're like 23 once you're 43, it's just all like, oh, you're still doing this? But that's kind of my original exposure to to yeah. rent. And so the the film was just a lot of people going, damn the man, I want to be free. And it's like, it's like you, you, you've had like 20 years of being free. What, what's going on over here? Not really, no. Uh, the mm. other complaint about rent is that uh, none of the characters talk to their parents. And it's like, they don't have to. Well, bitch, like, me, neither do I. What the fuck? Who yeah. <laughs> it's like they, they don't have to. They, they, yeah. they, they, um, because one of the recurring songs is Mark, the camera guy. Um, mm -hmm. His mom keeps calling him and he is screening her phone calls. Good. Um, Good for Mark. And people, people are. Uh, and people are like, she doesn't seem like a bad mom. She's not saying anything shitty to him. She's mm. just like kind of clueless. And it's like, do you know how exhausting it is to talk to a parent who just fucking does not get it? And it's like when he yeah. is in the middle of being blackmailed for a year's worth of New York rent, I understand that he does not want to talk to his mom to explain the fact that his ex-girlfriend is now dating a girl. Um... <laughs> This is uh, actually kind of, this is reminiscent of something. I linked to this in the Iron Circus Slack where, you know, we're, we're all business in the Iron Circus Slack. No, but, uh, don't lie. <laughs> I linked something in the Iron Circus Slack that is uh, surprisingly effective. Tangentially related to this, but surprisingly effective. And it's a dude on TikTok who does POV videos, most of which are excruciating and unwatchable, like POV videos in, in concept, most are excruciating and unwatchable. And you might know them if you like spectate TikTok drama as like mafia boyfriend videos, stuff like that. But this guy does wholesome dad stuff. So he just pretends to be your wholesome dad. And so he sticks on a, a fake mustache and puts on a dorky trucker hat and a fanny pack and, you know, puts on Birkenstocks and sandals and goofy shorts and a goofy t-shirt and big, big aviator frames. And he's just all like, Oh, there you are. What you been up to all day? I want to hear about your day. Why don't you sit next to Dan on the couch and tell me what you've been doing? I'm just so curious about your life. It's like, Oh, and then he's like, Hey, there you are. You looks like you're, you looks like a tornado went through your room. <laughs> it's okay. Your dad's just fooling with you. I, I know you'll clean it up when you get a minute. That's shit. <laughs> he like um, just does it for two or three minutes straight. And it's fucking, it's surprisingly effective, even though it's like this random white dude who is definitely younger than me and definitely not my dad. Yeah. God, I feel like that would give me a heart attack. Um, it, it's interesting because he's got the affect very much down. Uh, here, here's another. Um, people are wrong when they complain about this part. Oh, go um, for it. There's um, a lot of people are I will like read about Warframe. Uh, there are a lot. Of I'm joking. Who, <laughs> there are uh, <laughs> a lot of people who are like um mark and rogers art isn't even that good like um mark, and mark spent a year making a navel gazy boring ass movie that like it w no one would want to watch other than people that know him personally okay. um and mark makes a spends all year writing one song that is fine um like it's, it's not bad rent specifically Roger is the guy who plays guitar. He has AIDS. Um, okay. So we have, and then Mark, like I said, Mark's the guy with the camera who dated the bisexual lady that dumped him. Um, okay. And um, so people are like, oh, their art is bad. And to that, I'm just like, so people can yeah. make bad art. Like, that's, yeah, that's beside the point. Yeah, that's beside the point. I, I support people's right to make bad art. Um, as, as do I on a certain level. 
But, uh, it's it, not like actively harmful. Yeah, um, yeah, that's where I was going. Um, just to, I, I, if Mark wants to be only making like self-absolved, like the film equivalent of autobio comic journal comics um, about why don't like, girls love him more. That is kind of what it is. Um, but oh, uh, okay. <laughs> That was a mainstay of the 90s for people who don't know. Black and white, small press, autobio comics, overwhelmingly by white dudes talking about how why don't women love them more or see, you know, how amazing they are. Mark's film is basically the musical you are watching is Mark's film. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's shot on like a handy cam. So um, it's about him and his friends being upset that they they're not free to make their art man Mm -hmm. um and they don't want to be sellouts um oh the the 90s preoccupation of all time am i a sellout and that's fine compared to cartoon supervillain over here help me destroy the lives of homeless people right um but yeah um it's it's genuinely difficult to make clear how real that was in the 90s the whole fear of being a sellout or the fear of being accused of being a sellout it was it's it's like goofy now but back in the day it was fucking real dudes it was people like oh god i know i'm i'm afraid of taking this this deal with columbia records even though it's what i've always dreamed of because what if somebody disapproves and calls me a sellout like that was an actual anxiety people genuinely had it's there, so fucking uh, stupid one but of it was the real. other things that makes people mad um at mark specifically in rent is um that he is offered um a job on what is basically like MTV or something or like some tabloid TV show um and it's oh no he has a well paying job that is tangentially related to the creative thing he wants to be invested in and it can pay him a living wage mm-hmm. um and he quits it to finish his navel gazy film um and so there there are some people that get mad at mark specifically for doing that and i can understand but it's like again that that doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things like Mm -hmm. again he's not destroying the lives of homeless people yeah um Uh, and the thing is can i like can i like fucking make it personal for a minute Oh, no. see, this is what you get. Everyone, the five people watching, so you get all the fucking behind baseball here. Like behind baseball? Yeah, it, yeah. It's a TV show um that people use as sort of a metaphor for behind the scenes. Like Who's this people? is some real behind baseball. Inside show. baseball. In, I'm mean. sorry, inside baseball, pardon me. Um okay, so here's some inside baseball shit for y'all. Like twice in my career I have fucking potentially derailed what could be considered a good thing in air quotes because I had ambitions that outstripped my current means and both times it worked out. So I can't really, you know, shit on anyone doing the same, like quitting a cushy thing and pursuing their dreams. I'm not saying it definitely works out when you, (laughs) I can't say that like, it's going to work out if you do that. Like there is no justice in the universe. You could give up anything and everything and still fail. That's can relate. Stop it. But um, twice in my life I've done that. And the first time was with Smut Peddler, where I came up with this idea for an anthology. And back in the day, I had no cachet. No one had any reason to trust me when I said I'd pay them after the crowdfund. They had no reason to believe the crowdfund would work. And so I paid everyone out of pocket for their pages, like the initial page rate, with the agreement I would pay them more after the crowdfund came in. And I'm sure plenty of them like didn't think it would. So they were happy to just take the the, the standard page rate and consider that the entirety of their compensation because again this had never been done before Mm -hmm. and when i hit launch on the first smut peddler the one with the emily carroll cover 
I, I had maybe like eight hundred to a thousand dollars to my name, and that was it. And you know, I had paid. All this. I could not afford to print the book if that if that crowdfund had not come through. It just I would have all these pages I couldn't do anything with. And uh, it worked. It worked beyond my wildest dreams because it the the um the goal was for twenty k, which was a lot to me at the time, for for a crowdfund goal. And I was hoping in my heart that maybe maybe it would make forty because that would be a more realistic break even amount. And it ended up making like eighty something. And that was like holy fucking shit. I think I'm onto something. And that was kind of the first time I was like, you know what, I should focus on this publishing thing over this the you whole fool. my private web comic thing you fool and, and and you know so that that's what i did and, and it continued to work out it continued to work out really well and then a few years what is it puff and stuff hello like 10 years later i was approached at kala comic arts la oh yes yeah, so we've Stable told this Spiegel. story many, many and, and times. now you have two million dollars we got and, it uh, <laughs> And the same thing happened, but I, I mean, people know how much I have because they can go to the page and look. But uh, when that crowdfund launched, does anyone want to take a wild guess how much debt Iron Circus was in? A lot. Um, you can do it. I believe in you. I'd rather not. Don't, yeah, I don't, I don't think this say is that podcast uh, appropriate. Right? A lot. A lot of debt. I was yeah, running I'll, on credit from every. A lot. Yeah. yeah. yeah a ton. A t more than you think. More than you think. Trust anyway. me, everyone. But so it was okay. Funny. Yeah. And if that hadn't worked out, uh oh. Spike. So when people are like, oh, I'm quitting my job to move to Tahiti and write the great American novel, I can't really be like, don't do that. Yeah. Like, um, so, so those are people that are wrong about what's wrong with rent. But this um, does not mean by your estimation, rent is good. Just because people are wrong about it. I do. I enjoy it, but oh, there are oh, actual. Oh. I, I enjoy it, but there are things that are wrong with it. Make up like, your mind. Sure, nothing's perfect. Do you want it's, to be in my lab? It's a re. It's a modernization of La Boheme, uh -huh. and La Boheme is about tuberculosis. Yeah, which also randomly which, killed impoverished people and artists which, quite a lot. But because. No. Tuberculosis mm -hmm. it, um, is not AIDS. Those diseases <laughs> progress in different manners. Uh, oh no, did they die of super AIDS? Did no, have, like, it's just diagnosis? like the pacing. The pacing is weird okay. because like AIDS is not tuberculosis and vice versa. Very like, true. Very true. So like they're trying so hard to follow La Boheme that if people came and were like, that's not how AIDS works, it's like, they're correct. And if mm. you also said, the pacing is really weird, they're also correct. <laughs> like, yeah. Those are fair criticisms, uh-huh. Yeah, because, what, what, well, I understand, like, why that jump happened. Um, it's just, mm -hmm. they're different diseases and they progress at different rates. Yeah. Um, for, for folks who are not aware, like the 90s in particular, before kind of understanding what HIV was and, you know, a general sort of ambient knowledge of it was really commonplace. Uh, the cons super AIDS was a thing that would show up in media a lot. And super AIDS was kind of defined as so, a person is diagnosed yeah. with HIV and two years later they're dead. And it's like, um, no, that's not how that works. And and there are um, also people who don't like the female lead because she mm -hmm. is co-opting the language of age support groups to lead the um, Mark, the guitarist, um, down a self-destructive path um, in okay. a way that is toxic and abusive. Um, okay. That is correct as well. Yeah. Because so, like, they go, there's a part where they go to the AIDS support group, and frequently recited in Rent a Lot is "No Day But Today." Uh -huh. Um, and so Mimi, who is also HIV positive, like Roger, is mm -hmm. basically taking that "No Day But Today" and being like, "And that's why we should do all the drugs and spend <laughs> all of our money 
<laughs> and um, why are you caring about this rent situation? Just do whatever the fuck you want, because there is only right now. Uh -huh. um, and Roger, because he got AIDS from mm -hmm. doing heroin, is trying to not do heroin. Fair enough. And she is making it very hard. <laughs> um, it certainly sounds Because she is that like... Way. We should just do all the heroin. Um, because what's the point of not doing the heroin? Yeah. Um, and so saying that she sucks is a yeah. legitimate criticism. Sure. Um, I'm not going to disagree. Yeah. Like that's, I'm like, yeah, that's, that is a correct assessment of her character. But is this, uh, cause this feels like it's going down the same path as people who think are like, they think they're media critic critics, but all of their criticisms amount to the bad guy in this film is bad. And that's problematic. Um, she is not presented as the bad guy. So this is a uh. legitimate, like, this is like their grand love story or whatever. And it's like, this grand love story is mm -hmm. full of shitty people. Um, but that's what makes it interesting, potentially. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, you kind of need some shitty people in your, in your, in your long running. It's conflict. one of those things where it's not quite addressed how, ta how shitty she is being. Okay. Um, so it's it's unclear if it's intentional her shittiness. Oh, okay. All right. That's that. So that's why I think it's a legitimate criticism, unlike. Mark and Roger make bad art. Um, and, un and unlike a lot of things, folks, I think it is important to note you can't just go and ask the playwright of Rent, you know, okay, how did you mean this? Because he died like three seconds after the play opened. Yes. He, he had a uh, massive aneurysm and just dropped dead. So yeah. kind of there's a lot of room to debate what was meant here and what was meant there because... And yeah, you can't ask. And him. and criticisms of Mark's shitty art. There is a bit where a homeless lady yells at Mark mm -hmm. for trying to profit off her suffering. Oh. So oh, there hello. there is clearly some awareness that like yeah, Mark is self-absolved, self-involved and like and self-absorbed, yeah. Yeah, he's self-absorbed and so into his own head Why that he is not thinking about the actual people. And then his ex um, is a performance artist. And okay. on stage is clearly a parody of performance art. Uh-huh. Easy to parody. And in the movie sure. is not a parody. It is, like, treated completely sincere. And it's this is, again, the director, I think, did not get the memo that... Um, Maureen is not also not a good artist. Um, uh huh. If someone wanted to complain about Maureen, um, who's Mark's bisexual ex, mm -hmm. um, they're fully justified because her entire personality is slutty McSlut person who cannot be trusted because they are bisexual no, and will sleep with it. everybody. That is also um, extremely 90s. It is extremely '90s, and it's so. But again, this is like this is legitimate criticism. Oh, yeah, if you didn't yeah. like Rent because of bad bisexual rep, yeah, um, I mean that's yeah. legitimate. Yeah, it yeah. is both legitimate and very '90s. That you was are in my lap. Concept. You have to be nice to me. All right, yeah, go. Um, it's also weird that the cartoon villain, the cartoonishly bad villain, is yes, a black guy. Yes, that was guy. ravioli. No. Yeah, I'm. I'm it's, sure the playwright thought that was oh, cheekily subversive. Why? Why is the face of capitalism a black guy? Yeah. Um, yeah. That's not usually how it works out. Yeah. Yeah. Trust me, because again, um, to bring it back around to real life, once you click on a video that's all like, oh, a cop body cam video. YouTube's algorithm kind of does that thing where it turns its head really slowly, like a, a full 180 degrees on its neck, and like unblinkingly looks you in the eye and smiles and just goes, mm, and starts just feeding you a bunch of really crazy shit. And uh, one of the yeah. things that has been feeding me is process servers also wear body cams, everybody. And a, a process server, if you're not familiar, in the UK, you would call them bailiffs, but a process server is, let's say you are being evicted. 
the person who shows up to your house and says get out that's a process server mm -hmm. and uh yeah there are body cams of that up too it's painful uh so yeah so there are legitimate criticisms of rent they're just not the ones that everyone makes and that's why uh, and no it infuriates it. me yeah. when people are like oh they're whiny and complaining about the fact that they have to pay rent period and you want people to hate rent for the right reasons yes if you're going <laughs> to hate something be informed in your hate um yeah totally fair so yeah uh and rent rant and rent rant thank you for sharing i think we're all a little better educated for i'm that. not oh, but, but i like to listen <laughs> oh, also a criticism that it gets is um angel uh one of the queer black guys mm -hmm. it does a thing that was also very common in the 90s where the straight writer doesn't seem to understand that there is a difference between drag performance and being trans mm -hmm. so it is unclear if angel is a drag queen mm -hmm. but then some people play it as angel is a trans woman and it's the the, vi the not the video the uh the play is is less than the play death doesn't say one the the play repeatedly mm -hmm. refers to angel as he him yeah okay but angel is frequently in drag it's gender uh yeah okay so but angel also never corrects anyone in the play mm -hmm. so yeah if someone was like, I don't know about this, that's again legitimate. That's uh, a fair I think thing. That's a fair thing. Revivals have been leaning toward making Angel trans, um, uh -huh. but it again, that's going to depend on the director, their, their director, and the cast, and what they want to do. Um, right. Sure. Understandable. Uh, also, if someone doesn't like Angel because Angel kills a dog, that is also fair. <laughs> That yeah yeah, <laughs> that 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 would definitely sway opinions because that's like the classic, uh, movie way of being all like hate this person, like have them hurt um, an the animal the minute you see them. Cartoonish evil villain guy. Um, his rich wife has an annoying dog, and off stage, uh, Angel kills the annoying dog. Mm hmm. Understandable. I'm not gonna sit there and pretend it's not. Um, specifically, Angel was hired to kill the annoying dog. Angel oh. is a dog assassin. Um, well, I wonder what dog assassination pays. Um, so basically, uh, Angel plays um, the kettle drums, and okay. um, some rich lady who is the who, unbeknownst to Angel, is the neighbor of Benny the villain. Um, and is like the neighbor's dog is super annoying, and if you played near their house, I'm sure you would basically give that dog a heart attack because it would yap itself to death. Okay. And that is exactly what happens. Um, so Angel was paid by this lady to play outside the building all day, and the dog basically died of annoying. <laughs> I didn't know that could be fatal. <laughs> but you know what? Whatever. Uh, I'll I'll let this one go. You can do that. It can uh, fatal, yeah. annoying can be fatal. Sure. Why not? Yeah. It was. I think it's. Uh, it's been a while since I have seen it. But I think what it is is like the dog yapped and then like accidentally jumped off the balcony and hung itself with its leash. Okay. That that's a little less. Yeah. That that's not quite died from being anno being annoyed. <laughs> Yeah, that, that, that's a little different, but yeah. Uh, but yes, so Angel is a dog assassin. Um, Fair enough. I don't know. I mean, I guess I well, never mind. I guess I could see why someone would be all like, uh, "That is, that's too much." I, I am, I am, a, I am anti Angel now. Yeah, I suppose I could do that. I mean, I wouldn't be that way, but yeah. 
Yes, mm. someone in the chat is saying um, Akita, their Avita uh, <laughs> won't shut up. Um, is that like a lyric? Yes. <laughs> yeah, that was a little too clever for off the cuff. I figured it had to be. Hey, give people credit. Yeah. Uh, but yes. Um, mm -hmm. Now I am done talking about rent. Um, okay. I can Amanda, talk about you can other... come back. You can I'm come back, still Amanda. here. I just, I legit, here's musicals. the thing when you, uh. the thing is when you talk about something like Grant, which I have no knowledge of, except maybe watching one review of it just for background noise. It's like, mm -hmm. I don't have mental images when you're talking about, so I'm just like, okay. So I'm imagining these people in my head right. and these scenes. And I'm like, uh-huh. I hope what I'm imagining is right. Um, <laughs> maybe. It probably isn't. Yeah, probably not. I mean. Probably not. I just got no clue. Yeah. It's all right. It's okay. I've just been Thank working. Thank you for indulging our, our, our bizarre interests, because I know you do the same for me sometimes when I'm sitting there and fucking talking about some shit I know y'all don't care about. <sighs> so in Warframe? Yeah. Tell, tell us about Warframe. Tell us. Tell us no, I'm, yeah. I'm actually um, joking because this shit will make no sense. In that sense. case, I want to talk about um, RimWorld just a little tiny bit. Because I don't know if you're aware, Kel, but your friend and mine, Oscar, has mm -hmm. released a new thing. Mm -hmm. It's not vehicles. So a thing in RimWorld, I'll keep this short, I promise. A thing in RimWorld is there are Imperials. And every once in a while, there's kind of a suggestion that uh, there are rebels against the Imperial, em the, the Empire. Spike? And he yes? I back Oscar on Patreon, so I knew about this before you did. Uh -oh. oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> well, it's out, and it's really fucking involved. And let me tell you something. Not much can get your girl to, like, try and think about resetting a very advanced, comfortable kind of cruise control colony, which is what I've got going right now. But, uh... I'm I'm considering it because what's going on now seems really fucking cool. You can be a rebel and you can like fight the Imperials and you can gather intel and you can like destroy the Empire, I, which is nice because you do not have that option in Vanilla. You kind of either have to either ignore the Empire or join the Empire. Those are your only options in Vanilla. Yeah, but if you become too visible, the Empire blows you up. Yeah, yeah. They glass you from orbit with a heat ray. <laughs> yep. so I'm I'm into that and well, uh, just just so everyone understands how I spend my free time. Um, I have been playing a RimWorld world for a while now. And basically, it's about 90% androids. They're, it's 90% androids. And the androids are awakened androids, which means they have sapience and sentience. sentience. And uh, they take in other awakened androids. And they're all mostly super tech. Arcotech is what it's called in-game. And they they recently, you know, decided to take in a human baby. So they're taking care of a human baby. So imagine like 13 terrifying godlike super robots taking care of a baby. That, that's, what, <laughs> that's what I've got going on right now. And uh, recently they took in 13 human refugees because, you know, part of their religion, because the robots have a religion, is charity. And they have to take in people that ask for help. It's 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 a good thing to do. And they've decided they're going to try really hard to be people, you know? So part of being a good person is being a charitable person. So they're like, when people beg for shelter because they've been subjected to terrible circumstances, we are going to help them. So the robots, who do not need to eat, do not need to sleep, and do not eat to poop, need to poop, built facilities for people so they can do that and, and take these people in because, you know, they just want to be good. They want to be nice. And um, then 13 human beings, which I should note, they clothed and fed and feted and permitted to, like, use their arcade cabinets and computers and foosball tables and poker tables and watch their ultra screen TV. Just treated them the best you could treat anybody. Those 13 humans attempted to, in the middle of the night, kill them and take the colony for themselves and so uh you ate them oh if they wish i fucking ate them uh <laughs> what i ended up doing because part of the robot religion is those who betray our trust are no longer entitled to our mercy just out of self-preservation um 
what they ended up doing is they immediately just re- like attacked back because you know they had to and the ones who survived the attack there were two of them who survived the attack they were imprisoned and to make sure they didn't get feisty again their legs were removed and then basically we had this one psychic who is like the one non-robot adult in the colony is a psychic and he was getting a little old which is like inconvenient for us so <coughs> what we did is we had him I meditate. wasn't talking to you we had him meditate until he gained the power to de-age himself because he was like 57 and he dumped all his age onto these traitors. Well, closely close, not quite. He what he can do is he can cast a spell and it ages the person 10 years, but it, it it decreases his age by 2. So he's been doing that over and over again. Are you a good baby? And so now imagine these like legless and one of them has no tongue because they tried some shit and we had to we had to teach him again. Uh legless like people who rebelled against us trying to take our calling for their own in the prison just lying there getting older every time they see this man enter their cell and just be like no like they they, they wish i'd killed them trust me they wish so, I'd killed them. so spike that sounds merciful compared to what i have been doing to <laughs> is this people. about turning people into cows again don't listen to them, oh, Ravioli. They're worse. bad people. They're bad um, people. <laughs> so we don't turn them into cows exactly. We put uh-huh. them in the eugenics machine. I would uh-huh. never and commit we war crimes. We mutate them I so they have an udder, but also they have an egg layer. Um, <laughs> and also they grow wool. And then we chop off their their arms and legs uh-huh. um, so they can't go anywhere. So they just have to lie in bed mm-hmm. and provide mutagenic resources so As we can does. do this do they get to, the to read group. do they get to watch cartoons no they Aww. get to just lie there yeah they don't get to do anything they betrayed us damn it there goes um, some of my plans <laughs> uh the other thing i do is we found thrombo dna uh-huh um so when we have now that my prison is full of cow people um uh, that can't me. walk. Um, me with your tail. I am now taking the new prisoners and we are turning them into thrombos. And right after they turn into an animal, they faint um, <laughs> and they can't move for a day. Uh-huh. So they're turned into a thrombo and then we immediately kill them. Um, sure. And now we have all the thrombo fur. We have multiple thrombo horns and um, and we. Um, can so we're making a profit off of our prisoners. Um, uh, Daryl I... asks, Did Kel call it the Moogenix machine? I have, I didn't, but I should have. Um, yeah, lost but, opportunity, uh, lost opportunity. It's because it also makes them part sheep and part chicken. So, <clears throat> sorry, this is me uh, giving uh, Ravioli the spanks because she likes yeah. it because she's a freak. Um, but I have not restarted no. my colony because um, I'm trying to make a colony where one person is every type of furry. Um, that sounds incredibly complicated. Efficiency. I mean, it's easier now because we have the mutagenic machine. Um, what so what bot is that from? Pawn Morpher. Um, Pawn Morpher, okay. Yeah, that's one I haven't mm. fucked around with. I keep meaning to. Well, you make up your mind. So Ravioli only discovered laps this week. Uh-huh. And she like, it's like, oh, let me in your lap. Oh, this is nice. I like this. All right, I'm leaving. Bye. And it's like, could you? She hasn't quite understood you can stay long term. Or she uh-huh. just doesn't want to because, again, she's still got baby energy. Sure. So uh, she's just, the whole time I've been sitting here, she's just been in and out and in and out. She'll cuddle up and get so cozy. I'm like, oh, are you going to go to sleep? No, I'm not. Goodbye. Are you a good girl? No. Yeah. Also, we've been stealing eggs. I don't know if I mentioned that. Are you a good girl? Um, like, from eggs who? From, pe- from people. Like, there is one woman who's been in our prison for a long time, and uh, she has provided... Oh, <laughs> you mean you're extracting her ovum. Um, we, are, we are stealing her eggs. We are extracting her ovum. That's different and... from the type of eggs my prisoners are. Yeah, very um... different. Very different. 
we are scratching our ova and we are storing it in our medical facility because we might want to, you know, give birth to, to some babies at some point. Are you a good girl? And, you know, she's been so cool about everything, honestly. I I'm kind of thinking of letting her join because, you know, she's... Yeah. She converted and she doesn't cause any trouble and, you know, she's just a nice person. So we might, after these, like three or four years of her in prison might release her and allow her to join at some point. We might. Um, we might. So, but so the reason why I want to try every single different furry mm -hmm. is because all the furries are good, better at different things. Oh, okay. Uh, so like the rabbits are faster than everything. Um, so I actually made uh, my doctor a rabbit so they can rush in and do first aid and rush out. Um, sure, sure. Uh, and then um, uh, the cats people, like a panther, because they have like the big cats, but also like um, uh, house cats. Um, various cat people, they're better at melee fighting, obviously, because they have claws. Are you good yeah. at melee? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Ravioli, are you good at melee? Do you even need to ask? Yeah. But yeah. Um, Did you bite I me? The dog people are better at social. Um, mm -hmm. Chill out. Because they're just excited to be there. Um, Chill out. Yeah, sure. Dog people. Sure. And Don't jump the dog me. people will get a mood boost based on how many dog people you have in the colony. Um, huh. I guess that makes sense. Turn. More dogs. Um, and, um, the raccoon people are better it's at It's true. Biting is melee, little... and I did ask. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the raccoon people are better at crafting because they got their tiny little hands. Um. <laughs> wow. Almost human-like, really. Yeah. Uh, and monkey people are also good at crafting. So right mm -hmm. now, I have a monkey person and a raccoon person are my two crafters. Um, mm -hmm. and so how does Ron Morpher play with the new biotech expansion? Because that changed a lot of things. It it because it doesn't change their DNA. It's oh, just okay. Um, so it's a different like health condition. Oh. Um. So, if you use like the healer mech serum, it might get rid of their mutation. So I have to be careful oh. when I use that. Okay. Because yeah. it counts as an illness. Partly because there's a few um, mutagenic diseases that were added um, as part of the mod. Um, so if you get the chicken pox in Pawn Warfare, you oh, will God. become a chicken. Um, <laughs> That's so stupid. Oh. That's dumb. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, right now... Um, also, the rats are better at research because they're lab rats. Um, waka waka, yeah. I thought it's because they're so clever. Nope. They are. Um, they get... Uh, and then the pig people are better at cooking. Hmm. Um, because they're... They, there's some, like, reasoning behind it. But they're omnivores, now... and they eat most of the same things humans do. That's um, interesting, because in... Um, and they have excellent in... senses of smell, which is a big component to taste. Yeah. So yeah, I think and, that's and... why it's the sense of smell is what gives them the... Uh, uh, to... This is me pulling things out of my ass to justify yeah. these things. Yeah, me. And uh, it's interesting because in biotech, in the one of the official DLC for for Rumor, there are also pig people, but they're actually pretty bad at cooking, and they're, and they're because they have pig trotter hands, so they're not good mm -hmm. at manipulation. And but their one of their superpowers is that they can eat anything and not get sick and not complain if it's raw. Um. Any herbivore furry, so like a deer person, a rabbit mm -hmm. person, a cow person, if they're completely that, they can eat grass. Hmm. Um, and um, new the new go touch grass is go eat grass. Go yes. eat grass. Um, obviously the cow people can be milked. Chicken people lay eggs. Right. Um, Do the, the people eggs hatch? No. Oh. Because they're weird mutagenic eggs. Um, See, you I make more sword. mutagenic. Yeah, yeah, I have sword race installed. Yeah. And, uh, they they can lay eggs and hatch other people from their eggs. 
so sometimes um biotech and um pond morpher are trying to do similar things and you get funny results mm -hmm. um so like uh my person that's in charge of the colony has been making her way up in the empire um so she got high enough that she was sent a free high mate oh um, dear and i was like well we're gonna mutagenize you too um but the the high mate was a cat girl mm -hmm. so she has genes that say she has a cat tail but then she got mutagen that grew her a fox tail so now she has two tails ew um and two sets of ears because she had cat ears and now she has uh fox ears and so sounds um, uncomfortable um or you know someone's fetish um <laughs> multiple sets of ears all over the place so uh then um all the um is the lab rat pawn named brain no because um Ooh. all of the colony the co he I'm was a mouse anybody uh the colony i'm not recruiting anybody it's all babies so what <laughs> i do is i raise them up and then whatever they're good at once they're an adult they get to be a furry um, i'm that's... gonna go look at pawn morpher right now let's see what we got um, here on. Oh, okay. So here it is. It's by Yap, right? Yeah. Okay. So let's see what we got. Oh, that's not very attractive. What? I uh, I'm not a huge fan of the uh, the graphics that turn them into little furries. If if it was little, if it was a little nicer looking, like um, you watch Sam Streamer, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's got like a cat girl who isn't just like you know an anime yeah. cat girl. Like it's a fucking cat girl. And I was like looking at it, going, "Oh, that looks cool. I wonder what he's using." And I was like, "Oh, well, if these look like that, you know, maybe I'll install it because I have to have my aesthetics." But oh, for your little bean people? Yes, for my bean people. I'm gonna be looking at um, it for hours. I better enjoy it. There is a sub mod that like slightly changes the graphics. Um, do, do they look better? Um, I, I'm fine with the regular graphics. Um, <laughs> they're little bean people. It doesn't matter. Um, yes, it does. Aesthetics matter. I deserve beauty. What specifically do you think doesn't look good? Um, like, they're oh, still wow, beans. This looks good. Okay. I am now looking at, um, upscaled pond morpher and that looks good. Like that looks, that is aesthetically pleasing, but like the, the base pond morpher does not look aesthetically appealing to me. Um, like it's got nice line I, weight. It's got I've never graphic, seen the high resolution. I've never that seen sort of one thing. that looked good because at the other day they're still being people. They are, but the thing is, I I want it to look nice. Don't whisper. I want it to look nice. I want. I deserve stand up straight. Beauty. I deserve tie your beauty. shoes. I deserve beauty. Um, you will never make really these being people beautiful. Sure I can. I've seen uh, I've seen the mods that make them hot anime girls. They still look like beans. Oh god, those mods are just so like oh my fucking god. Like okay, uh, you know, you know what? Do what you want. Play Rimworld how you want, but just those those mods are so fucking stupid. It's like they're trying so hard to give them like these massive anime wings and like fucking it's like they're that's when I get kind of like you, man. I'm like they're fucking bean people. Like That's how I feel about you. Yeah. These complicated ass like, fucking made outfits with like cleavage and shit and ruffles and it's like they're beans. <laughs> I prefer the simple graphic look. Like it has to be clean and simple just due to their size. I consider them like digital meeple. If you do tabletop role playing games, you know what that means. I don't. A meeple is just usually wood, sometimes plastic, sometimes metal. These little things that are like people shaped that you use as, you know, tokens on on the board and sometimes people overcomplicate the meeple so from a distance it doesn't look like much it just it's like a it's like a bad tattoo it's just, it just looks like mush from a distance but um 
I like RimWorld's simplicity because you're going to spend most of your time zoomed pretty far out. So it has to read from a distance. Yeah. That's a good design. Um, I think they haven't updated the graphics on their mod. Um, but... Uh... Design is important. Design matters. In Warframe, I built a migraine Because they don't look like that anymore. Um, oh, okay. So they look good now? They don't look like the upscale one that you linked, um, but they just look different. Like, I think they look more like the actual animal in the game. Um, oh, okay. That's good. I like consistency. That's important to me, too. Um, Maybe that is what Sam Streamer is using Pawn more for, then, if they look different. Uh, he used Pawn Morpher in his um, flesh game. Mm -hmm. um, and here's where... one where I can turn him into insects. Yeah, that's a like add on to Pawn Morpher because it was after mm. um, the in vanilla expanded insect uh, thing came out. They did a like extension so that way um, you can turn them into the insects in vanilla expanded um, insectoid faction. Uh, Hmm. Um, yeah, I hardly ever play vanilla expanded insectoid because that's just like I fucking hate insects. Like, sorry, I just do. I hate them in this game. Well, I'm... so I don't like infestations, but I yeah. don't mind them attacking because you need them for certain things. Yeah. Um. So I have infestations turned off, but I have the insectoid faction turned on. So they can raid the normal way, um, mm -hmm. uh, rather than digging up and ruining my house. Um, <laughs> they'll come from the edge of the map like everybody else. Um, I remember when insects were introduced, because I've been playing RimWorld a long-ass time. And uh, basically, they were introduced exclusively to counter the fucking meta of digging into a mountain. And having like a perfectly safe mountain base. Because... Up until then, the biggest problem you would face after building a base is an enemy faction would touch down, they'd build a camp, and they'd besiege you. So they'd start flinging... You can't have my tweezers! You, they'd start flinging incendiary shells into your base. And if you're in a mountain, who fucking cares? So they could, like, yeah. theoretically besiege you for fucking 50 years, and it wouldn't make a difference because you're under a mountain. Cry about it. And he literally, and by he, I mean... um. The guy who who made RimWorld makes it, yeah. Makes Rim, yeah, makes RimWorld. He is still he is still updating it. He just introduced insects, where basically, if you tunnel into a mountain and you have overhead mountain as a condition for You're any in my one lap, tile, but if you chomp me again. No, it's I means... think you, it needs to be twenty, mm -hmm. um, because it won't pop up in a room that's less than twenty. Um, uh, so if you have like a four square room to shove a prisoner in, they won't pop up there. Okay. Um, but like, but, I remember when he introduced yeah. that and like the whole fucking community was like, God fucking damn it. <laughs> like, um, yeah, I can't that's have a why... mountain base now. I can't have like a stress-free little mountain base. This is that's bullshit. why I turn off the infestation incident. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I uh, basically stopped building mountain bases after that point, unless, because there is one counter, and I don't know if this was introduced with insect infestations, or he added it after hue and cry went up. I don't know which is which is accurate. But he introduced where if you keep the base, the underground base, below freezing, the insects will not show up. They will not tunnel into your area. So some people just kind of sighed and resorted to making mountain bases where everyone had to wear a parka indoors at all times. Um, here's the fun thing about Pond Morpher. What I did with one of my runs with Pond Morpher is I made a snow rabbit person. Mm -hmm. at like So they were already a rabbit person at the start of the game. Um, and I equipped them so like in their supplies were like 10 syringes of rabbit people mutagen. Particularly arctic rabbit mutagen. Uh -huh. Um, and on the ice sheet that they were living on, um, the pirates all froze to death before they, like, could attack. Yeah. Yeah, I used to do that, too. I, I had a, I had a whole thing I was doing where 
I was raising meat eating animals to sustain the colony. And when mm -hmm. we were invaded, we made sure that people had to go through like a maze to get to us, but we were on an ice sheet. So they would give up about halfway to the base, but by then it was too late and they'd fall down because they were experiencing severe hypothermia and we wait for them to die. And then we'd run out, get the bodies and chuck them in a, like a shed off to the side. They were full of the animals we were raising, like bears and wargs and stuff, and they just eat the bodies. Yeah. <laughs> it was so, very efficient. So, yeah, so, um, the, uh, I sh now that, um, ideo one ideology came out, what's fun is, um, you can, um, uh, have like the result of a good ritual mutate everybody to your sacred animal oh so hey. if you like um are playing on an ice sheet and their sacred animal is a snow hare anyone you recruit you can do like all right we did our ritual and now you are safe from the cold because you're now also a mutant rabbit um, that's pretty cool um how you doing, Amanda? Isn't this fascinating? Yeah. <laughs> it is fun to listen I to. I just have nothing to say. Like... Yeah. My favorite thing I... is uh, Save Our Ship. My, if I could recommend one mod to anybody would be Save Our Ship, which allows you to build spaceships and travel to space and do cool space shit. Are you, are you figuring out how the lap works? I keep on? being like, maybe one day I'll play without Pawn Warfare. And I'm like, no, no I'm just I can't play playing. vanilla. For a while there, all my mods were really broken and I couldn't figure out how. And I went like months without playing RimWorld because I just, I couldn't. I couldn't figure out which mod was breaking it. And I was that unwilling to install, but this, to uninstall. But this isn't rather. even, this is just Pawn Morpher in general. This isn't mm. even like the other mods, like... Yeah, there's just some quality of life shit. I can't fucking deal with it. Like, I just, I, just I won't. like I won't. funding mm. my um, colony with yeah. my enemies being turned into thrombos and then slaughtered. Um, <laughs> that sounds very, very profitable. Yes. You want to know how oh. one of the ways I fund my colonies? I have a hospital that's incredibly well stocked. Because keep in mind, they're all robots, so they don't need medicine. Mm -hmm. And they just capture a lot of medicine when people attack them. So we, mm -hmm. because we believe in charitable acts, we have opened a hospital. And it's with the hospital mod, for anyone who cares. And people come to our, the sick and the dying, they come to our hospital and, and we treat them. And, and they're like, oh, thank you. And they're so grateful to the nice robots who helped them. And you charge them money because... Well, the problem, I can't not charge them money because of the way the mod is, but it does a lot to um, make relations between my faction and their faction really good because they show up with like advanced cholera and shit and, and we can heal oh. them like stuff that would, would kill them. And so it's, it's pretty fun to run a hospital in RimWorld. Um, oh, the beavers, the beaver furries are good at planting things. Um, Sensible. So my farmers are a beaver furry and a capybara furry because they're both good at um, planting shit. Hmm. I did not know there were capybaras in Pond Morpher. Um, yeah, they're doing all the default animals. Um, oh, okay. okay. So yeah, so if there's a... <coughs> if there's an animal in the vanilla game, they um, have a morpher for it. Um uh, the warg morphs um, are good fighters. Get, I imagine they can't get food poisoning. Um, oh, okay, because they eat raw meat and corpses. Um, yep. Uh, what's fun if you have someone that is turning into a warg morph, and then you give them luciferium, um, they turn into a hellhound morph. Hmm. Which is... But then they're addicted to Luciferium. No, because that's they're just a new morph. Um, oh. uh, but uh, yeah, I'm having a lot of fun with it. Um, I just got a cheetah mutagen syringe, so I'm gonna put that in somebody. Um, 
One of, one of the girls that's almost grown up is um, a, li loves fighting, so I'm like, I might turn her into a cheetah. Um, Which would be weird, because cheetahs aren't really about that life. Uh, I also have lion and panther morphing, so mm -hmm. we'll do one of those, too. Amanda, tell me about your life. I'm you have tired. been so patient. You have been so patient. I re Here's the other thing. I don't have a lot to talk about. Oh, yeah. I'm just tired. I have been working. Um, mm -hmm. There's just not a lot going on. Um, I did have a revelation that made me like want to go cry. Oh. I want to do a webcomic next year, and I was looking at all the various companies and organizations that you know handle web comics that you could join. Uh -huh. um, and the, the creeping revelation is that none of them can do anything I can't do myself better. Yep. Because of my experience of doing it before. And there's that, that realization is like, no, <laughs> it's like, no, I don't want to. Yeah. But OK, fine. Yeah. And by that, you mean places like Webtoon and Tapas and. Yeah. Like th those people. Okay. Basically, all of them are pretty much like none of everything they do. It's like. I can already do that button better, and I won't have to wait yeah. on you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Curse yeah, having yeah. experience. Uh. Yeah, I have. I have. Um. I have very strong mixed feelings ab about all of that, which I've I've made clear in the past. That you know, I I I wish comics weren't as centralized like they were, like you know, fifteen years ago. But I understand the appeal of it, and I understand why that, in the end, at the end of the day, won out over running your own website. Well, because running it, your own website is a whole thing. It didn't win out. I, here's the thing. Here's how I feel about it. I don't think it won out so much as it enabled more people to make web comics. Because yeah. if you actually read web comics, there's still tons all the time that have dedicated websites, new yeah. ones all the time. Um, it's just that there's a lot of people who, if you give, say, okay, to make a webcomic, you need to learn to make a comic. Okay, you need to now learn to make a website. I can't. I only have time for the comic part. Yeah. yeah. So they just never would have made a webcomic. So yeah. all these other sites, like, have just made it so more people can make webcomics. I still don't like Webtoon and stuff, but I'm yeah. saying I don't think it's replaced the old webcomic format because, again, tons of webcomics launch all the time and are doing pretty all right um we have not like lost uh yeah okay. personally hosted web comics in any meaningful numbers i'm discovering new ones all the time and adding them to my read list uh it's just that we have way more people who would otherwise not have a web comic right okay Fair enough, fair enough. Because their go-to used to be whatever blogging platform was the most popular, they would use that. And then mm -hmm. nobody would read it except niche weirdos. <laughs> like, True. the people who couldn't make a website had live journals where they would figure out ways to serialize their comics. Then Tumblr. Tumblr was where people would serialize their comics. And somehow there are people serializing their comics on Twitter. Godspeed. That sounds yeah. like hell. But... Yeah. They're doing yeah. it. That's so yeah. Definitely not made for that. Yep. So yeah, the, the, and again, like the web the web the personal website format is still thriving. It's still going. Yeah. Yeah. But uh very recently and I I get this is pointless. This is old man yells at cloud level shit. I get that. But uh recently I have noticed the generic term for webcomic is seems to be webtoon among yeah. a certain percentage of the populace. Yeah. And I'm like, I wish that wasn't a thing. I just, I can't care anymore. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to pretend that I can personally hold back the tide against whatever. It's, well, it's, it's just also one... like with, I remember once um, certain people in publishing Mm -hmm. took webcomic as a term as an excuse to deride it deride it um yeah. and even though online comic meant the same fucking thing for whatever reason that wasn't used to deride it yeah uh, 
So I remember um, when Misfits of Avalon came out and they were talking to me about how to promote it. Um, I did specifically tell them to say the online comic Sorcery 101 rather than the web comic Sorcery 101 um, yeah. for that reason. Weird times. I mean, um, and so I think web times will, really. Mm -hmm. I think like webtoon will become a thing like that where in some circles it will be a good thing and some it will be bad but like if you say online comic no one's going <coughs> to not know what you mean. Um Yeah. Yeah. Some people are using webtoon to specifically mean the infinite scrolling uh -huh. um rather With than an online comic in general. Um Yeah. So. Which, which I've experimented with a little bit, and I have to say I'm I'm not a huge fan of the format. I'm not sure if I'm going to continue my experiments with it because moving it from platform to platform sure is obnoxious. And I've been wanting to po post my infinite, you know, air quotes here, infinite canvas stuff to Blue Sky, where I'm kind of like super active these days. But uh, it would require a lot of editing, and that is time I do not have. Also, mm -hmm. Blue Sky's kind of janky still. Oh, Blue Sky's been like I'm yeah. not using it as an art platform for age. Like I'm waiting. Yeah. I'm still using Co-host. I'm sticking yeah. with Co-host. Yeah. With Co-host, mm -hmm. I can edit my posts and do like the slightly web comic format where there's a first and a next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I still have my comics on. Um, co-host and and pillow fort and that's intentional you know that's that's because that's where i want them and it's to aid discoverability and all that other good shit all that happy horse shit and i i'm probably going to leave them there and i i should update them more often and i offense uh, i felt some immense guilt recently because someone's like oh hey i was curious about you know this thing you're doing and i went and i read all of wakata and it's wow it's great you know i hope there's more soon why did What's you feel guilt did they pay because, you because because you know, man because amanda I, spike hasn't drawn it at all uh, i haven't drawn it in but why guilt months. I, because I shouldn't, I have a problem with starting fucking comics and not finishing them. Oh, you mean shame? Myself. Yeah, shame. Okay. Shame. I felt shame. <laughs> <laughs> I felt shame. And it sucks. It sucks. It fucking sucks. It sucks. It sucks. Yes. It sucks. I know. I, I understand. And I kind of like dream of a world where I could just, you know, chill, you know, and just fucking make my dumb web comics and not really worry about it. But I, I do not have. I'm also trying to survive under capitalism. I do not have that luxury. And over the course of my life, I have looked back over years and years and years and seen the various points where I have been forced to surrender what would make me happiest for what would keep me from dying in the streets. Um, I'm just, you know, not a fan of those compromises that I've had to make. Spike, would you like to know what I'm working on right now? Sure, why not? Uh, a game. Oh, cool. A game. How interesting, Kel. Yes. I'm That's working such on a an game. interesting thing that you're working on. Yes. <laughs> this is definitely the first I've heard of it. This is definitely... This is in, this is brand new information to me. I'm also working on a Thank game, and it's been in limbo <gasps> hell because I don't have time. Amanda, you are also working on a game. That is exciting. No, what it's exciting not. exciting and new information that is. It's not Thank exciting. You for sharing that exciting new I'm information. I'm suffering. <laughs> See, the eight people fucking watch and are like, oh, oh, oh. yeah. So y'all get inside, inside info now. Um, if you follow uh, me on Pillow I, Fort, not Pillow Fort, whoa, on Blue Sky, this is not news, but yeah. Uh, I am making a game about you are, it's a time management puzzle. Mm -hmm. Um because I'm good at time management. Um, true, and true. Uh, the you are a single parent and you must prep the basement for your werewolf child. Because um, a full moon is coming. Yes. Um, so you have to do a certain number of tasks. You have to prep the basement so the kid not only doesn't get out, but is also entertained. Um, and safe. Yeah. So... Um, what an interesting talking, game. I was what? talking recently to my collaborator on it, and we were discussing how dark did we want to go with the game. Um, 
Because, you know, there can be mm-hmm. some bad endings. Um, For sure. There, it's like, I, I'm, I actually am very open-minded about what I consider a game in that I don't even necessarily consider a win statement or a lose statement necessary parts of being a game. But yeah, well, we were definitely uh, a lose state. It was like, how yeah. dark do we want these lose states to go? Um, as dark as dark can be. AKA, do we want child murder in this game? Um, <laughs> Honestly, I I would be okay with it, but only if you like built it up so it was an actual tragedy. You know. Um. We we decided to not go full child murder. Um, Ooh, coward. Social services just gets called. That's one of the games. Oh, you coward. You coward. <laughs> what? Yeah. You coward, you coward. Oh, coward, that's the word. Listen, if yeah. your kid gets found naked in the woods. Um... So, so I was already super behind on mine because I'm in hell. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And now I have to rewrite it. I know that feeling. Yeah, um, my, uh... Speak. Oh. I was going to say, my partner, through through no fault of his own, it surprised him as much as it surprised me, through no fault of his own, he had to uh, drop out. So I have a new partner now, and quite frankly, I, I have to talk to them tomorrow about what I have planned. And, um, uh, yeah. The reason I have to rewrite mine mm-hmm. is because after the goddamn Ocean Gate submersible thing happened, I, there were too many parallels, and I was just, like, staring a while mm-hmm. going... People are going to fucking think I, I just took it from the headlines. Yeah. I'm going You're gonna to think it's like your law and order or some shit. Yeah. Like, God fucking damn it. So I have to. <laughs> and I just haven't had time. And I feel bad it's for my partner. They do. seem really patient. And they're just like, oh, yeah, we can roll with whatever you do. And I'm just like, <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> but like, I can't. I have to rewrite it. It was going to be about. Anyway, long. St- Ugh, it's got to be different is the point. Yeah. It just yeah. so happens I really fucking love engineering disasters and assholes who mm-hmm. think they can skirt around regulations. It's my it's my crack. Yeah. The uh the whole thing that I had going and I don't know I don't know how married to this I'm going to be, but I'm going to present it tomorrow is uh basically they th- you are a person who lives alone. This is an idea I've had for a while. You are a person who lives alone. And there is a terrible presence in the woods and you, you have to feed it. You have, you're, you're kind of one of those. Oh, the game. This sounds like the game we were supposed to make. Yeah. Yeah. But I got weaseled out of apparently. Oh, sorry. But now you get to make the game you design. I liked the game. We were brainstorming. Thank you very much. I'm sorry, Amanda. Don't be mad at me. Too late. (laughs) But yeah. Uh, it's one of those deals like, you know, how there are people who will go out and they will just feed all the cats in the neighborhood because, you know, they have compassion for stray animals. Um, in this case, you are that woman. You are feeding the stray animals, except you live in a fairly rural area. So the stray animals you're feeding are probably stray animals you shouldn't be feeding, like um, raccoons and bears and stuff. And then something starts joining the raccoons and bears. And you get this sense that feeding the animals is now no longer optional for you. You have to keep doing it because something might happen if you stop, if you stop feeding the animals, because this thing is clearly part of the group of animals you are now feeding and and you don't want it to be hungry. So the, the game is kind of a bunch of intended and hopefully if I do this correctly, the intention is that it's a bunch of moral choices that you have to make about how important is it for you to, frankly keep living over other people oh and the first one will be kind of a non-choice like the idea to ease you into it is uh the first person who has to you know suffer for your will to live it's kind of like almost like the choice is made for you you don't really have to think about it but as time goes on the choices get harder so yeah uh havelock in chat has recommended uh, well, there's your problem, and I already listened to it. I'm a huge fan. I put it on usually when I have comic pages to draw because it is a good mm-hmm. listening companion. Yes, no, I'm extremely aware of Will's There's Your Problem. It, it's a podcast about oh, yeah. uh, engineering disasters, and I, I love watch it on it. YouTube. Yeah. I, I, I'm explaining for the sake of anyone who doesn't know. Yeah, yeah. 
Billionaires ruin everything. Very much so, Daryl. They ruined God my dang. game by dying. <laughs> Even when they don't mean Selfish. Need to, they fucking ruin it. Selfish. <laughs> oh, by the way, speaking of billionaires ruining everything, sorry to everyone who is used to following me on Twitter, but I've I've fallen into the the blue sky hole. And I, I'm kind of ninety percent there That's these days. That's where you live now. Um, that is where I I'm live. I'm trying to be there. there, but I'm also trying to span the gap and yeah. still post the Twitter because I all I have things I need to promote in the future and Blue Sky is just fun. Sorry everyone. I haven't I haven't I haven't been having fun on social media for a long time is the thing. Oh, really? It's just You not... know, um, my saying is just that anime yeah. meme. Um, there's Ca- no such thing as fun on social media. Um, yeah. There's nothing fun about social media. But I just, here's the thing. I'm reaching this point where I just kind of don't, I don't know. I This could also just be depression, but I'm just not having, mm-hmm. very, I haven't had fun on social media in a while. It could be because of the way the algorithm on Twitter changed, and now I don't see funny stuff anymore. And mm-hmm. and the idea of building a new audience, or even the trans... For, for, I'm just not in the mood to entertain anyone anymore, and that's kind of was mm-hmm. my go-to, my driving. I like to be on Twitter, because I do like to say things and entertain people, and that drive has kind of been gone for a while. You did, yeah. Yeah, I like to share stuff. Like, I'll find something interesting and be all like, oh, I, I should show this to the people who follow me on social media. Well, like, that impulse is still there. It's just all on Blue Sky now. We talked about this that, um, Spike, when you um, are faced with a um, thing that you think is neat, mm-hmm. your instinct is to tell everyone. <laughs> um, whereas my instinct is to privately send it to the people that I know will care about it. Mm. Um, Whereas I just go, huh, neat. And that knowledge dies Um, with me. (laughs) I've never had that urge to share things. Like every blue moon I'll say, oh, so-and-so would like this, but like. Yeah. I mean, my impulse is just like the most recent example is a, I've known about this for a while, but uh, this just happened to cross my dash on like YouTube today where there is a uh, motorcycle race and it's called the Isle of Man TT, which is the Isle of Man Taurus Trophy. Titty. And it's a motorcycle race. It's been going for like 112 years and it is the deadliest race on the planet. It is so deadly. It has been struck from the championship tour, which means you do not have to race it to gain points towards motorsports championships. Like it is a fully like optional race. It's not recognized. Yeah. It's not recognized. And most people do not do it because it's fucking like, it has been a very long time since they've had a race on Isle of man where no one died. So you can pretty much guarantee nearly every year, at least one person will die. Some years, six people die. And it's because there is no speed limit and over 112 years, like 266 people have been killed over uh, Isle of Man TT. And that's not just racers because when they wipe out, when these dudes wipe out at 200 miles an hour, they send 400 pound motorcycles hurling like skeet shot into a crowd and that kills people. And it rips their limbs off, and it pulverizes their okay, vertebrae, okay, and it just okay, come caves on. their heads in. Hey. It is the gnarliest race you can imagine. Just for contrast, one of the things I talk about a lot is a rally categorization called Group B, which was, like, over with before I was even aware of my surroundings. Like, it's old, old. Group B is old. It was a set of regulations in rally racing, and it was described by people who did it as cars that moved faster than humans could react so it was just it was entirely unsafe and it killed four people over the course of four years and that was enough for group b to be absolutely atomized like they destroyed it like you can no longer race group b and isle of man again has killed 266 people over 112 years and it's still going and the crazy thing is like it's not even the money that draws people like the, the prize, the cup for it's Isle the of thrill. Man. Yeah. The prize, the cup for Isle of Man TT is like 
fifteen thousand dollars. Sorry, fifteen thousand pounds. So like twenty thousand dollars. It's something like that. And like in motorsports, that ain't shit. And even like the absolute legends, they call them the kings of the mountain because it's a mountain course. The kings of the mountain, they all have day jobs because like this is not their job. They can't make a living racing Isle of Man, but they do it. And it's just so it's oh my god, it's horrifying. Like it's truly horrifying. And it just, it grinds people up. And it's, like, become this cultural thing on Isle of Man, which is, like, this little itsy-bitsy island between Ireland and... Um, Scotland. Well, yeah, Ireland and Scotland. So it's the island in Great Britain. It's, like, in the Sea of Ireland. It's, like, smack dab. I've conquered it a bunch in, <laughs> in Crusader Kings. But uh, it's this little tiny island. Uh, speaking oh. of learning geography from Crusader Kings... Um, uh, it, it gave new context to things in Macbeth um, mm -hmm. because it's like context Amanda's never seen Macbeth or read Macbeth uh, Macbeth is, is um, he kills the king of Scotland so he can become king of Scotland um, at his wife's behest at his wife's and what behest. is this? This um, is a play, right? This is Macbeth. Yes, this is a Shakespeare play. Okay. Um, so, it's the one with the um, skull. What? There's a lot. You no, know. Hamlet's the one with the oh. last poor York. I knew him well. Oh, um, okay. okay. I was like, oh, it's oh, the God. one with the skull. It's like, okay. No, Macbeth is the one with the woman who keeps trying to wash her hands and the blood won't come off. Um. Anyway, so... I've never um, heard of that before. Oh, okay. Uh, anyway, so... um. Basically... Macbeth is in charge of the second biggest county or like duchy in Scotland. So like learning oh shit, yeah, if you were king, you he it would be easy for him to like take over. Like mm -hmm. um because from playing Crusader Kings and ruling Scotland, it's like if you don't run that area you have to play nice with whoever's in charge of that area because they have the second biggest army besides you as the king. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, it was yeah. kind of like, but, oh, uh, I'm getting more historical and geographical context. Um, but but yeah, like Isle of Man um, also has this thing. I, I urge you to look this up because no. it's the most insane looking thing I've ever seen in motorsports. And there's no, a lot of crazy you. shit that goes on in motorsports. It's called Isle of Man Sidecar. And it's like it's like a motorcycle sidecar. And you're probably thinking, oh, yeah, I've seen those. You haven't seen them like this. Basically, imagine you are... It's a two-man It's a two -man, um, racing team. The guy on the motorcycle... Okay, I'll look this up because it sounded car. like you were describing an accident. So. No. <laughs> There's a guy... The guy on the motorcycle and the guy in the sidecar. Except it's not really a sidecar. It doesn't have a seat. It doesn't have Oh, my God. It, it doesn't have anything. Oh, are you looking at it? <laughs> I'm gonna post this. Yeah, in and the stream. basically, they are not secured. There, there are no belts or straps or anything holding people in, because when these, when the Isle of Man sidecar motorcycles corner, the person who was the sidecar rider basically leans all the way out of the sidecar to as a counterweight so that the the bike can corner harder and go faster. And this kills so many fucking people. It, it's so it's so ridiculously dangerous looking and again it, this is something people just do if you are in the sidecar league if you come first place you win like six thousand pounds like it's not shit it was probably more expensive for you to get yourself and all your shit to the isle of man to race than the amount you would win it's deeply insane okay i'm trying to add these images give me a second <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's just one of those things where well, it's like group B. When you first learn about it, you're like, how is this allowed? How, how is this okay? It's it's completely okay, the first image. bonkers. Oh, are, you, are you looking at it in the chat? No. Oh. I'm putting it in the stream. Oh, oh okay. I, I cannot wait to see this. Well, don't wait because there's a lag. Okay, I'm going to refresh. You'll just be them. quietly watching. I'll just... I'm just going to refresh then, and I, I will. No, they're the lag. Never mind. The, okay. the lag. You can't fight the lag. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. It'll show up eventually. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> there it is. Room. <laughs> yeah. 
But yeah, their butts are like an inch from the asphalt. And keep in mind, these people are going like 150, 160, 200 miles Jeezy an hour. Jeezy crazy. Oh, here's it's a great of, picture. Okay, let me get this one. Yeah, too. it's kind of hilarious that they're wearing like racing leathers because like if you hit the asphalt going that fast, Road Rash will be the least of your fucking worries. Right, so yeah, go. that's Isle of Man sidecar. You can find video on YouTube. You can file Isle of Man TT video on YouTube too. They they they've held it every year except during the years of the World Wars and during COVID, and and they just keep fucking doing it. And it's cultural on the island. It's like it's culture. Like every young male owns a motorcycle and wants to do it, and it's it brings like millions and millions of pounds to the island in tourism every year. And there are people who are just like, it's fine if I die because I'll die doing the Isle of Man TT and that's okay by me. And it's like fucking, it's so crazy. It's so crazy. I'm so hungry. <laughs> I'm hungry too. I'm very hungry. <laughs> but yeah. Um, hey, does anyone here need a invite code to Blue Sky? Because I have one. I've got five. I have two. Yeah. yeah. So if anybody in here needs one, let us know. We can We can get you one. Just say something in chat. Um. <coughs> we have more codes than viewers. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, basically. I'm okay with that. I think it's really overrated to have like 5,000 people watching you. Um. Oh, no. If we had 5,000 people watching, you'd never see, for, see me again. That's too many <laughs> fucking people. Uh, yeah. This is cozy. I'm I now to thinking here and just... about... Um, the it's most lit. recent adaptation of Macbeth for film mm -hmm. um, is real good. Um, one of the Coen brothers made it. Oh, okay. um, uh, it's he's definitely like all the sets are fairly minimalist and were basically created to create interesting shadows. Oh, um, rather than like be realistic. Um, I'm trying I trust to... the case level of the Coen brothers. Yeah, so it's I don't think really I've seen anything looking. they made. You did. We watched Fargo. Um, yeah, we watched Fargo. We did see that one. Yeah. So, um... That was a movie. Yes, that was a movie. It was a good movie. It was a fine movie. It had good parts, but I can't say I ever want to see it again. Oh. Not in a bad way. Not in a, ooh, I'm repulsed. It's more just, I had a good time. My urge to go back on that ride is not there. Yeah, I know that right. feeling. Movies where you're like, that uh, was really good. I hope I yeah. never see it again. No, uh, I hope I, I never see it again. That's not what I said. Okay, okay, okay. I wouldn't be opposed uh, if it was on. It's just, it's more, I will not seek it out to for a rewatch. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, I, so, Spike. Um, yes. The Coen brother Macbeth uh, is the tragedy of Macbeth. It stars Denzel Washington and was uh, the production company is A24. So ah, okay, that's a seal of quality if I ever heard one. Uh, it's really neat looking. Um, the three witches in Macbeth um, are pay played by a contortionist. Oh. Um, so she gets all weird while telling him his prophecy future stuff. Uh, hmm. I should probably watch something by A24 so I understand what people say when they mean, oh, it's by A24. That's a good thing. Like, Have you uh, um, seen someone Everything, on... Everywhere, All at Once? No. That's the one a lot of people really like. Yeah. I have not. Someone um, once described Iron Circus as the A24 of comics, and I consider that the greatest compliment I've ever received. I don't. I still don't see that. Does, I still don't know what that means. They do weird shit occasionally on the cheap. Ah, uh, yeah. I don't just, think they have to be cheap. It's just if they no. believe in. They yeah, just, just they fund weird shit. Um, yeah. The thing. All right. I mean, I've talked about this before, but you know, they kind of circum. They they skirt around the Hollywood complex where everybody gets a piece and everything costs a hundred million dollars because that stifles innovation and experimentation. So mm -hmm. if you bring a 24 script, okay. Say, I've seen get out. No, wait, no, oh, I haven't okay. seen get out. No. Oh, okay. I, I'm incorrect. No, I, I got it. But like, with, no. if, you, if you bring a 24 script, and you say, I want to do a movie about puppies on the moon and how they're being raised to replace human heads, not human beings, just their heads. So everyone's going to walk around with a, with a moon puppy 
for a head and how this is all being controlled by Atlanteans living under Antarctica. Like every major studio is going to be like, what the fuck? No. But if you bring that to A24 and you say, and I can get it done for $600,000, they'll probably be like, you know what? Sure. <laughs> sure. Go for it. Do it. And and that's kind of their signature. Like shit that other studios would be like, no, that, that, that would be dumb. Like we can't afford for that to fail because just getting a movie out the door for us is going to cost $50 million. And we don't think this movie will make $50 million. Um, so Spike, I put in the chat, um, a shot from the Macbeth, uh, movie. Um, there's a lot of cool shots. Um, okay. Using light and shadow well. That does look nice. I'm wasting away. It's a very pretty movie. Yeah. And as yeah. for the story, it is literally just they're performing Macbeth. Like, that's... Yeah. The beginning and the end of it. Yeah. Um, Amanda, Macbeth quotes you have probably heard is heavy as the head that wears the crown. Okay, heard that one. Um, a lot of Shakespearean stuff has entered common parlance, yeah. Yeah, um, but that one's from Macbeth specifically. Um, oh, have you seen The Whale, Amanda? No. Oh, okay. In fact, I have gone out of my way to not see that one. I hated the previews. Yeah, I... Have heard not great things about the whale. Um, have you heard? Have you seen the witch? No. Like with it's the, not my the jam. Like to live deliver deliciously. It, it does not look like my jam. Okay, I, I like the witch a lot. The witch is good shit. Yeah, it seems like. Have it's you your seen jam. Hereditary? That again does not look like my jam. Oh, Amanda God. does not like horror movies. Um, the it's Green quite, um, Knight. Mm -hmm. Um. I'm trying to think. Marcel the Shell might be the closest to. I like Marcel the Shell. I've seen that. No, one. That that's why I'm just thinking. What would Amanda like? And yeah, the, that's like the most. That's the nicest movie. But tying um, it back into other shit about like I uh, like it a lot, but I have no interest in seeing it again. Another A24 movie is uh, Uncut Gems, and it's bizarre because it made me really respect Adam Sandler as an actor, and it's it's just about a guy who is a jeweler in New York who has a, a really intense gambling problem. And it is easily the most stressful fucking film I've ever seen in my life. Like I had to take breaks during it. Oh, the, um, most yeah, I think I remember that. I think Abby did talk me out of seeing hereditary. It's incredibly stressful. It's like, you don't think you could be stressed out just watching a movie? I defy oh, anyone who no, believes that no. to watch Uncut Gems. Like, the most stressful movie I have seen ever um, is called All My Friends Hate Me. And that is like, <laughs> you're stuck okay. in an anxiety dream. And mm -hmm. I was like, I, I cannot finish this movie. Like, I, mm -hmm. I had to stop it multiple times and walk away. Like, that is the most stressful movie I have ever seen. Um, See, that's my thing speed. with horror movies and why I don't like them. It's either A, I don't think it's scary and it's really boring. It's just, What I find scary is so narrow mm -hmm. that most horror movies just don't hit it. I'm just like, this is silly. I can't. Or oh. it does hit, but then I'm super anxious and I'm like, oh, I don't want to be anxious. I'm anxious all the time. Have you seen yeah. Have you seen Midsummer? No, in fact, I don't want to. Oh, okay. Okay. A lot of, like you're you're saying horror movies, Spike. You gotta get away from the horror movies by A twenty four. But Luke's um, Midsummer's good shit. If you like that but kind of thing. Amanda I don't. doesn't wanna see a horror movie. Um okay, okay. Everything Everywhere All at Once. That's on my a, list. Is, yeah. That's an A twenty four movie that is not a horror movie. I have multiple friends um, who are still upset that I haven't seen it, so I'm like, Well, I better. Yeah. Uh, you're gonna get bullied green, into seeing it. The Green Knight is another non-horror movie. That um, looks boring. But... Oh, wow. Okay. Um, but I'm also a dummy. You're so hard to please. Amanda. Yes. <laughs> it's it's a very pretty movie. Um, you know how and... like you'll you, you'll try to give your pet like the really good for them food, but they really love their terrible Alpo. Yeah. Yeah. No. That's me. Yeah. yeah. I I think. <laughs> For Amanda, Marcel the Shell is the best bet. Followed yeah, by every, Marcel everywhere is, all at once. It's very cute. Marcel the Shell with shoes on is very cute. And I think horror the, works for me when it's mm -hmm. like 
a subgenre for something else. Okay. Like, like it's a it's side just... thing. If it's the, the whole, if the whole focus is horror, I either just mm-hmm. get really, really bored, or I get too anxious. So it's like, okay, when it's Fair a enough. little thing, like it, I, because I'm thinking I do like horror elements. I like horror being a part of something else for sure. Mm-hmm. Marcel is about this. It's like it scratches my itch because I just have like a preoccupation with like little tiny thieves living in the walls. Like I just like that conceptually. Like the borrowers and the littles. I like I dig that shit, and I don't know why. I just do. And uh, Arietti, like I fucking love Arietti. But um, the Marcel, the movie Marcel is just it's this little shell, and the little shell lives with his grandmama in like this person's house and he talks to the person who has decided to start filming him and Marcel starts talking about how he misses his family because what ended up happening is that before the current resident the former resident of the house was a married couple that broke up and in the middle of their big breakup the I think it was the woman like grabbed all of her clothes out of the drawers and threw them in a bag and just left and the, the shell people who, who try to stay out of sight usually, but like not very hard, but they, they do try. Uh, they Every time there's a fight, they, they don't like the noise and the discord. So they they go and hide and they all had decided to hide in, in that drawer that day. And so everyone who was not Marcel and his grandmama, who is Isabella Rosalini, interestingly, uh, they got packed up and taken away by this woman when the couple broke up. And and Marcel doesn't know where his family is now. And he just sort of like talks about how he misses his family and how it's important for him to not go out and look for his family because he has to take care of his grandma. And he's the only person left to take care of his grandma. And the movie is about, you know, not being afraid to do scary, hard things like go find your family because it becomes clear over the course of the film that it's kind of just an excuse Marcel is using. Like he doesn't really need to take care of his grandma and grandma is kind of trying to gently nudge him towards accepting, you know, stop, stop using me as an excuse and go find your family. It's, it's very cute. And it's stop motion. Um, which I'm down for. I recommend it. Everyone should watch Marcel the shell with shoes on. Yeah. Anyway. Um, Spike, this version of Macbeth is worth checking out, at least for the visuals alone. Like, even if Shakespeare isn't really your thing. Um, oh shit! Hi, Abby. I just noticed that Abby Lark is in here. So. Um, the thing about Shakespeare quotes is I always forget what fucking play they come from. Um, Same. I'm trying to think of. Uh, Stars Hide Your Fire's title is from uh, Macbeth. Um, mm-hmm. Something Wicked This Way Comes um, comes from Macbeth. Yeah, by uh, the pricking of my thumb. My so thumb, please. Something Wicked This Way Comes. Um, Amanda, Boil, Boil, Toil, and Trouble. Um, that whole thing, that's from Macbeth. That's what the witches say before when they are introduced. See, my first exposure to the Something Wicked This Way Comes was, I think, a a book that was referencing it. Yeah, that's um, the title. Is, Something Wicked This Way Comes is uh, the title of a book that it was referencing Shakespeare for that reason. Hmm. I remember reading that book. Um, Wasn't... Wait, never mind. What? No. <laughs> One of what I think is the coolest Shakespeare quotes comes from Romeo and Juliet, of all places. Mm -hmm. Um, These violent delights have violent ends. Um, Yeah. Such a cool quote, and you would not think it was from um, Romeo and Juliet. I do remember, I did read Romeo and Juliet in school, and the the teacher made a point to be like, all right, I want you to translate all these. Pa- I, I, we are going to basically translate all these passages, and I want you to notice something. And we were like, wait a second, these are all sex jokes. And she was like, yes, yes. I need yes. you to understand how fucking well. Not this. This is not. Her, I'm paraphrasing, obviously. She's like, I need mm-hmm. you to understand that this was not high art. No, and no. this is the horniest shit. 
Yeah, uh, yeah, Shakespeare and Kabuki theater and opera all have that in common, where originally they were, like, garbage for the rabble. Like, people didn't respect well, opera and Shakespeare and, and Kabuki. And well, now they've kind of evolved no, into for, classic there. For Shakespeare, it was because it was the main entertainment, he had to hit both groups at once. Mm -hmm. um, so all the sex jokes are for the rabble um, are for the rabble but yeah. then you also have um the like poetic stuff that the 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 grand like tragedy was aiming higher than that the maybe not so much um romeo and juliet but like definitely his histories mm -hmm. like is like this is historical and this is important um uh while also peppering in sex jokes for the rabble like every single shakespeare tragedy has like a comedic duo um that are are there just to like make goofy jokes yeah. um like but Rose i always get like one of the fun things about there to they're Timon and Pumbaa. Um, yeah. One of the uh, fun things about kind of like being aware of your surroundings when it comes to history is seeing how often, you know, shit repeats. And one of the things that you could reliably track throughout recorded history is what I refer to as ban this sick filth. And mm -hmm. ban this sick filth has come up time and time and time again, talking about how the downfall of society will be opera. The downfall of society will be uh, the average person being able to read. The downfall of society will be movies. The downfall of society my, will be recorded music. You know, it's-, it's My fine. favorite is the downfall of society will be the written word because yeah. then um, storytellers won't put effort into memorizing like poetic yeah. meter or whatever blah 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 uh yeah the written world word was considered like something that shouldn't be taught to people who don't have discipline because then they will rely on writing instead of using their brains or they will simply read things and just believe them without any further interrogation of what they just read and that will cause the downfall of society in, uh, in how did people, your topical joke how, here how did people think words work they think if like but yeah, they thought every well, I mean, it's a classic human thing to think everybody on earth is dumber than you, you know? It well just doesn't make any sense. Like did did they just think that the things that you say with your mouth are always true? And you don't not, nobody interrogates them? It ain't rational. Uh, no, it's just it's just just like people oh, you know, you can't translate the Bible from Latin into actual spoken languages because then people will start to question what their priests tell them and that will lead to the downfall of society. Like, goofy shit. Just goofy fucking shit. Up and down the street, goofy fucking shit. Um, Guess what? There's... Society hasn't downfalled yet, you know? Fallen down. Downfalled, whatever. It hasn't <laughs> done that. <laughs> it has not been felled downward. Yeah, it has not uh, fallen down the stairs perpetually to, yet. To bring it back to Shakespeare being the common people's, um, the rabble's entertainment, uh -huh. in like the early aughts, late 90s, there was that one phase where they were trying to modernize all these different Shakespeare plays as teen movies. Mm -hmm. um, like 10 Things I Hate About You is just Taming of the Shrew. But yeah. in a high school, um, and then she's the man is also one, um, and it's just funny how it was just like in the early aughts, someone was like, "We're gonna just take all this Shakespeare and turn it into teen movies." Um, yeah. yeah. Well, you know what they say: don't you know if it ain't broke, et cetera, et cetera. Also, um, I think. It is a shame that Disney stopped their straight to DVD sequels simply because The Lion King had set up that its sequels to follow in The Lion King's footsteps were all Shakespeare tragedies given a happy ending. Mm -hmm. So I would like to have seen their attempt 
at King Lear with a happy ending. <laughs> they can make it for streaming. They don't have to do the DVD market. Uh, I would also like to see um, Macbeth with a happy ending and Othello with a happy ending. The Macbeth with um, the happy ending is, oh, wow, you killed him, but it turned out that was the right thing to do. You should feel really good about it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yay, you killed him. Musical but, but, number. But, but King, King Lear specifically, Simba mm. goes crazy and banishes everyone from the Pride Lands. Yes. Um, how do we get to a happy ending from there? Um, I, I notice everybody in the chat is listing things that will destroy society forever, and they include novels. That was... That is a real, very, very real one. With women and having it, pockets. Like, serious, seriously, there are cases of people who have gone on trial in, like, Victorian and Edwardian times. And their defense lawyers basically said their brains were corrupted by too much novel reading. Because the novels they read featured heroines who defied, you know, the natural order of things and the law and their parents and, like, rode out onto the moors bareback on a, on a snorting stallion in the rain to meet their lovers, you know? And, and that poisoned the minds of young women against their parents and against authority. And that was, like, a, that was a fucking Man. brought court and presented uh. defense. Man, Lee, I like Lee, Dis uh, I like Disney's Hunchback. I don't care that it's not accurate. Me not care. I liked it. Uh, uh, but so like, uh, Lee, Lee, they did not do Titus Andronicus. That is another one I would like to see. Uh, the given a happy ending. Um, just want to see. Um, and Nudis is bringing up video games. Can I just say real quick? I am so. I will go to my grave. I will go to my grave insisting there was a window where people could have really turned video games into comics, uh, specifically comics in America, because comics in America just absolutely got its hands chopped off uh, during McCarthyism by a guy named Dr. Frederick Wardham. And they fell behind comics around the rest of the world, world in terms of variety and audience and popularity for literal decades. Oh, is this like the, the Hayes Code stuff? One man. Uh, Hayes yeah. Code for film, but this is specifically Comics Code Authority. Oh, the Comics Code Authority. I got my shit mixed up. Yeah, you were there. You were on the same wavelength. But yeah, yeah, I'm just dumb. Like, literally, I'm not kidding. You can look it up. The quote is out there. He compared comics to Hitler and said comics were worse than Hitler. Like, it wasn't even a joke. He was dead serious. And that it's also... fucked up comics for 50 years in the United States. Yeah. And I think video games came very close to that, but somehow managed to escape because some of you might not remember, but there was a lawyer in Florida, of course, named Jack Thompson, who was literally, like Frederick Wordham, spreading lies about video games and telling everyone, like, I, I'll never fucking forget this because, like, I was a very avid Sims player at the time. And he had glommed on to the uh, uh, Grand Theft Auto hot coffee thing. And because hot coffee, like, was an actual issue, he decided to try and force through this opinion that video games were, like, all made by perverts with the stated intention I mean, of yes. children. Well, and, except for the second part. Yeah. But, like, one of the things that he said, and I'll never fucking forget this, because, like I said, I played The Sims, so I was like, I know that's a fucking lie. He went in front of, like, actual legislators and he said that in the sims 2 like j like fucking going after kids romantically was like baked in and that you could take all your clothes off and walk around the neighborhood naked french kissing everyone including the pets and just like he was just fucking lying and fortunately in my opinion he he showed up like maybe five to ten years too late because the people he was clearly trying to instill panic in. They'd already been playing video games for years. They'd been playing The Sims, and they knew he was lying. Like, he was going after the panicking mom demographic, but, like, but moms play The Sims. That's who they sold The Sims to. Yeah. yeah. Like, like, moms play The Sims, and they know you can't do any of that unless you have some very specific mods installed that you went looking Like the for. baby barbecue. Yeah, like, it's oh, I also, love the baby barbecue mod. Very useful. Um... <laughs> I think um, 
video games was smarter for doing the rating system in response to him rather than like um, a list of things you can't have in games yeah yeah whereas the comics code authority is not just seduction of the innocent um mm -hmm. but it was also superhero publishers getting together and be like we can destroy the our competitors out of business yeah um yeah, yeah. They, uh, they and... explicitly wrote the Comics Code Authority to kneecap EC Comics, specifically. But also, um, people always bring up um, EC Comics, and yeah. that is because um, people perceive comics as a male-focused industry. And actually, if you look up sales at the time, yeah. romance comics yeah. were also extremely big sellers. Like, yeah. people talk about kneecapping EC comics specifically, mm -hmm. but they also made sure to kneecap um, romance comics because the rules about what romance was acceptable basically made every single romance comics plot be girl likes boy, boy likes another girl, main girl is sad. Yeah. Or... Uh yeah. Yeah, there was a time when like romance and horror comics were the biggest sellers. Oh, for sure, and that's why uh superhero comics went out of their way to make sure they be banned. Yeah. Yep. Um and so it's like got horror comics banned made it so romance comics can only be extremely boring. Like mm -hmm. um Yeah, like if you've never read the Comics Code Authority, everyone, I encourage you to take a look because it bans things as vague as disrespect for authority. Like you are yeah. not allowed to negatively depict marriage. All marriages depicted in Comics Code Authority approved comics had to be happy ones. And then all romance cops could to... never lose. Cops could also never be depicted poorly. Like yeah, um... yeah that would be disrespect for authority. Cops could never lose, and they could never be depicted negatively. And it's 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 super fucked up. It's super fucked up. Um, and of no course, vampires, comics were no werewolves. Yeah. Um, you can't use the word crime on the cover. That was again yeah. specifically for EC. Um, but yeah, that's what happened to comics in America. Like, just absolutely violently stymied by fifty years of the Comics Code Authority. And it sucked. And it sucked. And it sucked. But um, fortunately, Scholastic and Jeff Smith came to the rescue. And while comics are, I said this before, comics are still not what I wish they were. They're in a much better place than they've been in any of our lifetimes. Um, but yeah. Uh... Like I get to publish, publish all kinds of stuff that, you know, I don't even think about what the comic fucking code authority thinks of them, you know, and I don't have to. And that's, that's an improvement. What I think is really funny is the beginning of the end for the comic code authority uh -huh. is Marvel was specifically asked to make an anti-drug comic, uh -huh. which is like the mildest, like there's a guy who's acting weird and he might fall off the roof and Spider-Man finds out he was acting this way. Cause he's on drugs. What drugs? D a drug. Um, and um, that did not pass the Comics Code Authority because you are not allowed to mention drugs mm -hmm. um, in the Comics Code Authority. So even though they it were specifically asked by, like, the government to make an anti-drug comic, they're like, well, we, we have to put it out anyway. Um, yeah. And that was the end. Um yeah, and it's it's it sucks that like that is what American comics were forced to kind of work with because as a, as a general note, there is no like actual like on the books by the government law passed related to the Comics Code Authority. Yeah. What specifically it's about is the comics industry got together, drew up this code, and then basically they went to the distributors and the newsstands that were carrying the comics, and they went. Um, we want you in the name of, you know, preserving American purity. 
we want you to agree to not carry any comics that are not featuring this stamp in the corner, which reads approved by the Comics Code Authority. And that way you can reassure any worried parents or whatever that, you know, oh, we don't carry any of that commie trash. We have we have only uh, Comics Code Authority approved comics here. And, and that Mad basically Mag- was only Superman and Bugs Bunny were kind of like the only things that were published. And uh, Mad Magazine got around that because they are a magazine, they're not a comic. Exactly. Um, That's where Mad comes from, everyone. And I think the same thing, uh, when Heavy Metal first came out, they were like, we're a magazine, we're not a comic. Yep. Um, Yeah. But anyway, it is 10.07. I'm very hungry. I'm I'm starving. I'm wasting away. And I think we should cut it here. What do y'all say? You say that like we're going to say something different. Two hours is always our cutoff. Well, I'm just I'm trying to make it. I could cool. go longer if you I don't like I fake platitudes. To. I'll fight you, Spike. Get over here. Well, okay, let's fight. No, I changed my mind. I'm tired <laughs> and hungry. Let's fucking fight. Let's fight. <laughs> but everyone, hi, I'm Spike. What's up? Um, if you enjoyed what you heard here, please follow me on Blue Sky. That is where I'm currently most active. I am Iron Spike on there, all one word. You can also, if the mood strikes you, follow me on Twitter where I am iron underscore spike, but don't expect a lot. I'm kind of not really there much anymore. I am also on Pillow Fort. Just go to Blicata.com to read my webcomic about three idiots who are murderers and thieves and what happens to them. I am also on on, um, Co-Host where I do a comic called Ordinary about a monster and his best friend who is also a monster in every way that matters. On both those sites, I'm Iron Spike, all one word. Please also follow Iron Circus Comics on Backerkit. 31,000 followers there and counting. We've got all kinds of interesting things that I don't know if you caught it. I don't know if you caught it there uh, in, in the middle of this episode where we got some stuff that, you know, we might be talking about soon, maybe next week. I don't know. Maybe you might want to see, see what Iron Circus is doing next. Just check that out. And, and that'll just about do it. IronCircus.com is where Iron Circus Comics is at home on the internet. Please buy some PDFs, buy some books. And that's it. Quack. <laughs> Kel. Kel? 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 Oh no. <laughs> they fell asleep on us. Kel. Kel. I'm taking you violently by your shoulders. Kel. 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 <laughs> Amanda, you should go. Uh, uh, well, unfortunately, mine's short. AmandaLafrenade.com. A-M-A-N-D-A-L-A-F-R-E-N-A-I-S.com. That links to most of my stuff. If you go to... Wait, I forget how the URL works. Give me a second. Uh, my co-host I has a... I believe in you. My co-host has a pinned tweet that links to all my stuff. Okay. It is cohost.org slash Amanda Laugh. That has a pinned post... That links to all my various where to find me stuff until I get my website up and running. It has links to my social medias, where you can find my work, uh, different ways to support me. It even has Amazon wishlets for me and, most importantly, ravioli. Okay, um, I have seen Kel's... Oh, yes, I just saw... The internet just farted itself and died. So, everyone... You should, you should go to kelmcdonald.com. That is kind of a clearinghouse for everything Kel is doing. Kel is also, I'm like 99% sure, on Blue Sky. Yes, I thought yep. so. They are Kel McDonald on Blue Sky, all one word. You should follow them there. And uh, yeah, I, th- I, think, I think that's about it. Uh, they're also uh, on Patreon as well. They have a webcomic that you can read yes. on Patreon yes, called yes. You Are the also Chosen One. Yeah, you are the chosen one on Patreon. You should read that as well. <coughs> and, and they would me. tell you all this themselves, but th- th- their internet just threw up on its shoes and fell over. Okay, then. 